Hey guys, what's going on? February 24th, and so I've had a lot of questions from many of you guys as far as the market crash. We're going to take a close look at a very important factor when you're trading the market crash, and that is move compression versus move expansion. So there's a lot of guys that were destined to go to a million plus this week, and it didn't happen. It happened on a couple of key trades, guys, which I'm going to show you exactly five trades that went 10x plus this week but this video is going to be devoted uh, specifically to understanding the historic analog and sort of reflect on a couple of uh, bearish videos I have posted about market crash uh, which began in our view on February the 17th so um, in a couple of prior videos I've pointed out to the historic analog saying look when you see this first gap down this is uh, this is the first sign that look the market is fucked but when you go through something like we've gone through this entire week you're looking at the chart and you're like hey there's not a whole lot going on yeah the market is falling yes 30 market moves actually predicted the five day drop thank you very much uh one two three four five five days red candles guys right after uh, February 17th so the market's been going nowhere but lower the question is okay why haven't millions of dollars been made well the answer is we have had a major move compression on day three four and five of the crash so so far we're at five percent move lower from where we posted the first video guys was uh, right here when the market was playing with a level of 4140, 4150. Uh, today, at some point, we're at 30, 3940, 3950, uh, close just above that. Overall, that was a 5% move. When I posted the first video, I said, look, we're going down 5 to 10%. Okay. But in this video, considering now that we've got new data, new candles, okay, um, I'm going to uh, touch upon some factors uh, which ultimately i think will lead us to the next week and clearly there's got to be a catalyst uh but that initial gap on the historic analog dating back to the february of 2018 right um if we're to break this down on day by day basis right the market is doing this stalling out action so it looks like uh here is just a, a gap down and there's another gap down and then there's acceleration of the move and so on this is the part that we're going to get next week okay so far we are in this phase of the crash um and guys things have been moving quite slowly uh this week but the bear case is intensifying it's intensifying slowly uh when i was showing you this chart last time i pointed out yes there's a bullish cross here uh but it's gonna fade out and so at this point when we look at the current market condition okay uh here as you can see now there's a greater potential for this cross to actually turn the other direction and turn into a bear formation at this point we're looking at a bear hook here uh, another a great thing that has developed which gives us a clear pathway for how things are actually going to play out on monday um it, you know look at the formation of these two candles so this was the candle last friday which i called the big indifference candle where hey looks like we're gapping down the market looks like it's ready to go way lower but nothing fucking happens right we drop and then we slightly bounce look at how identical this candle is in relation to this candle now both of these are friday so we get an identical candle Look, we're gapping down this morning. Uh, we're going lower. By the end of the day, the market is trying to stage a comeback. And it fails. It fails at a very critical level. It fails at a level just like last time when we gapped out, gapped down on uh, Friday the 17th. We gap down, drop lower, and pull back, uh, trying to stage a comeback. But we never closed that gap. And look at today same formation on the candle the market is trying to come back into a bullish reversal higher and it is unable to close the gap down for the day we still end up about 40 50 points lower for the day but more importantly at this point we're closing just under the blue line okay and in some instances 
you'll have situations in the market where institutional investors, they're waiting for that moment, we're waiting uh, for that undershoot where they're coming in and buying. So at this point, you have two of these candles, the formation of candles are identical. We're dropping, and by the end of the day, the market is trying to stage a rally. We're dropping, by the end of the day, the market is trying to come back. But in both instances, uh, out of uh, actually in three instances here, out of the last five days, overall move is lower followed by a smaller size comeback the move is lower followed by a smaller size uh, comeback uh, some of these uh type of candles could be compared if we just reference some other part of the chart right here so for example here's a gap down here's almost an identical setup right that we can witness back in september where um we have this escalation higher and then we get the first gap down expansion of the move contraction or compression of the move one two days we have this uh candle where the market is trying to come back tries to bounce again one more day and then we get one two three four five six six red days in a row okay so uh, this is sort of a pause okay I mean, there's a lot of positions we're accumulating on the way up. Some people are still hoping that the market is going to come back up here. Um, I think we're going to go straight into this sort of scenario next week. Okay. And considering if we study this candle right here, which was last Friday, the 17th, when we opened after the holiday. Now, it's clear some of you are like, Leo, how are you trading the market over the holiday? Guys, you traded with futures. We trade options on futures. If you still don't know how to do that, make sure you uh, visit 13markmoves.com. Talk to your senior coach here. Set up your account properly to where you can even make money on a freaking President's Day holiday. Okay, so that was an easy move to capitalize. And so after the smaller move on a Friday, what do we get? We get a move expansion move expansion we get now three days of move compression so all of these three days last three days they are a lot smaller in size in relation to this red candle right here but again it's a pattern we study patterns here that 13 market moves they are based on patterns so basically if we follow this pattern further come monday we're supposed to have a small size gap down followed by an expansion of the move so after three days of compression guys sometimes when the market is in the position of a, a drop when the setup looks so perfect as as it does in in this historic analog we're comparing to uh, right here to uh february of 2018 guys when the move really clears and the move expansion happens you can have like we had three days of compression now we can get three days of expansion to the downside possibly five days okay so now because the market has it hasn't gone higher okay we were highly accurate on five days low in the market now i thought that if the move expansion was to happen on day uh three four and five of the crash then you know today we could have had a climax we could have been at 3800 we could have had a pivotal moment where the market would have bounced back but so instead of this market uh move lower of five to ten percent which we're now at five percent move from when we announced the crash we probably got another five to possibly seven percent to go at this point which could play out over the course of the next week and if you were to ask me like okay leo what would be the great catalyst for this i think um I, and this is just a pure speculation okay i have no information about it whatsoever but just trying to play the market psychology and looking at the market participation and how this last three days of contraction they just the the market is still hopeful that things would get better that somehow we're just going to bounce and go back to 4200 there's still analysts out there that are projecting 4800 s p target by the end of the year okay so i mean they're hopeful hoping that maybe this you know 4000 level was going to hold well i clearly pointed in the last video it's not going to hold and so we're now um i mean we're 50 points this was a solid break sometimes a market will break a, a key level like a 4,000, but like maybe 10 points and bounce back out 
And that's exactly what happened on, on Thursday, right? We break below, we bounce back, and look, look what happens the next day. It's a gap down. It's a setup when you have, these are often uh, pattern-wise, we're referencing in 13 market moves as a move four type formations. Clearly today was not a move four because we gapped down, we finished way lower, but on Thursday, this was a, a four move where we gap down, we, we go lower and then we, we bounce the fuck out by the, by the end of the day. So oftentimes a move four is a way of a market to reverse and resume the bullish trend. Uh, that it had right here. But when you see a failure of, of that move four on the follow through, so a four move could be followed by a seven the next day or a one, but you can get a clear three. It's a four three. You're heading into, uh, into a severe downturn here, guys. You're heading into a three two. Maybe there's going to be some bounces similar to that. But overall, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't turn bullish at all until maybe we hit 3,800. Now, remember, just because we had a compression, the money making opportunity has not been as great in the last three days, with the exception of some killer trades that we nailed that actually we had a trade today was a 30x. But uh, again, more on that in the next video. But as far as this chart concerns, it is deteriorating. It is deteriorating despite of VIX not wanting to jump through the roof. Uh, despite of, uh, you know, major divergence today, the market still tries to bounce at the end of the day. Guys, these are dangerous, dangerous market conditions because, again, look at this chart. Okay, this is often like we're going through this phase right here. Up, down, a little bit of stall action right here. Uh, next week is going to be this. Okay, uh, the only dots to uh, put together here is one of the biggest catalysts we were talking about as far as the market going lower uh, this week was a drop in oil. So the oil, oil tries to drop crazily again, 74 stalls out, 74 stalls out. So highly profitable trade, all of a sudden turns, all gains are gone on that trade. Um, and, you know, it, it just, oil basically stalls. And so the question is, could we get a huge drop Monday and that could be that could be a huge catalyst for an expansion of the move but even without any catalyst sometimes some of the biggest crashes guys they lack a specific catalyst like the crash of 1929 which by no means am I suggesting that we're in that moment right now it could be comparable to that but what I'm saying is in 1929 there was not a specific catalyst of any sort uh, that we can point out to specifically and say, okay, this was the event that caused this. So this was the event that caused this. So at times it really pays to look at this situation of move expansion versus move contraction. So it's clearly when we're looking at this chart. Okay, the chart is deteriorating. The RSI is deteriorating. The cross here gets more severe um, it, despite of these bounces. And it is also important to look at this as like, look, things don't look yet like they're falling apart entirely but one thing is clear okay every time the market is trying to bounce it is failing we're not getting any major bounce here okay we should be getting a bounce but we're not getting a bounce so we're getting small size bounces small size bounces they are a solid confirmation of this new downtrend so we've nailed the top right here guys we're down five percent i think there's still five to seven percent more to go on the market uh there, there's some easy money to be made based off this chart so if you want to be able to nail next time on your own hey leo well, how do i know well, what the fuck this is well study our charts diverges and and uh uh pattern recognition course and you would know how this situation transitions to this situation how this chart that i was just showing you not so long ago saying hey uh when we're just getting the first red candle here i said look we're gonna get five uh, red candles in a row so how would you like to be able to do that on your own and capture this guys so look from this just the beginning of it we're transitioning to this now way way lower under key level unable to reverse uh and so 
identifying this pattern, contraction of the move, expansion of the move. Three days of contraction, guys. There is a 90% overwhelming probability that over the course of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there is going to be an expansion of the move, an expansion of the move, something that will resemble this part of the chart where we could have a day where a market is going to collapse 120 points, 180 points possibly. I mean, you can possibly drop down on the 3800 briefly, maybe to 3750 and then bounce back out of that. But uh, there's definitely room for downside. Uh, current move has been proceeding in a very orderly fashion. Yes, there's selling stocks. Yes, there's been a ton of stocks we've, we pointed in the last few videos, which are down huge, guys. I mean, some of these stocks uh, made 10, 20x that I've posted in some prior videos. So the question is, did you miss it? Um, did you not take the trade because maybe you didn't fully understand it? As I communicate with more and more traders over the years, guys, I, I can summarize it in, in probably one uh, biggest argument why uh, traders don't make more money uh, or why they avoid taking trades, and that is because of the lack of the understanding. Uh, so um, I invite you to take uh, the, the charts diversity course, the third mark moves course, study the hell out of them so you would have the confidence to stay with some of these trades. Okay, and clearly the collapse this week, we've called for the five red candles. There they are. Okay, we've called for these five red candles way before they happen. Okay, and you know, just to have the confidence to do that. Okay, maybe you were looking here at the chart and you saw some white candles. You were saying, no, no, they're saying the news that we're going to break out higher. Maybe you bought some calls and then maybe you watch our market crash video a little too late after the five red candles. Um, so just understand the more you study the charts, the better understanding you're going to have of what's happening with the market. It'll give you the confidence to stay with the trade at some of the most critical moments when it matters. And when market move expansion happens, these are going to be some of your greatest payout days ever in the history of your trading. I guarantee you that. And this is how we're positioned going into next week, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, possibly, possibly four to five red days. And again, I, I told you I was going to give you the speculation of mine. So why? we could actually have a huge drop and and i think it's it's gonna come down to the job report so last job report we had was incredibly in, incredibly just out there in the stratosphere as far as the amount of jobs created as far as what analysts expectations were in relation to that number um and so this coming friday uh, we could get a totally different picture. That that last report could have been the very climax point uh, of, you know, the the job picture. So it's going to be very difficult to beat the job report. We're not going to get as great numbers we got last time. The question is, how bad of a number can we see? A hundred eighty percent shift in the job report. Because look. All the technology companies, they've been letting people go right and left. Okay, There's no way in the world that at some point it's not going to show in this job report data. Now, the way they report the job data is really fucked up. It's always reported with a huge delay up to 60 days. So I think all of these job uh, layoffs, everything's been happening, especially you know in the tech industry. It's going to play out uh, either in this job report or in the next one. And the market could go through this euphoria of last job report, which was phenomenal, to complete opposite of that, which could be a complete flop. And because finally these numbers, these workers that were laid off over the course of the last 60 days, it's finally going to show up. And we could get a, a, a total reversal of what we've seen in the last job report and that's going to be this this friday guys uh it's going to be on uh let's see on the third on the third of march okay so when 
uh, 3rd of March comes, it's going to be a very, very, uh, in my view, pivotal moment for the market because, again, the job report number could be so drastically different from the last job report. And at that moment, I believe it is going to be a moment of a realization by the market participants. Oh, shit. Okay. They're going to be like, hold on, Fed is going to continue raising rates. We thought the economy was good, but the economy is total shit. And that's where we can get a day where S&P drops by 180 points and so on. Uh, so the question is, I mean, how severe can this drop be? Um, I've given you uh, an easy case scenario where we're just going to maybe touch uh, 3,800 next week. But depending on, on that actual job report guys i mean don't be shocked okay if this chart really evolves into this chart here this okay so uh, take next week extremely extremely seriously because fortunes will be made next week on weekly options uh if you don't want to miss it and i promise you like you missed some killer killer trades this week. By no means S and P 500, S and P 500 futures or spy. They were not our best trades. As a matter of fact, had guys lost money on these trades because of this bullshit move compression that we've had in the last few days. Every time you know some of these big trades that would turn positive, I mean, these these little bounces would come eat up a lot of the profits. So. That those are not your highly profitable days. Your highly profitable days are going to be on the move expansion. And if you study this chart, right, there's not going to be a ton of areas where you get a move expansion followed by maybe one, two days of contraction. And shortly after that, you're destined to get another move expansion. Uh, so market could stall for an eight, you get in a move expansion. So I think considering the rate of compression, you know, I, I think we're about to get this huge, huge expansion. Could we go sideways for another couple of days? Yes, but not based off the pattern that the market has shown us here already. So basically this candle and this candle again, they're perfect match. They happen on the same day. This is a Friday. This is a Friday today on the 24th. So the probability that we're going to get this sort of candle on March 3rd is literally like out of 100%, maybe it's 2% that we're going to get the same type of candle. Now, the only way we could get a similar candle if maybe the market by Friday already, it's like way down here. Okay, so the bear continues the March uh, move compressions, take a lot of profits out from what could have been phenomenally profitable trades. But thank God we got besides this trade we had a lot of other trades um, so if you're curious what the are what were the five trades that went 10x plus literally within moments make sure you check out the next video guys but uh, hopefully this was a good explanation for some of you that are really trying to follow this historic analog um, again last glance at this this here what happened this week is an equivalent of this right here and this is where we possibly had in next week, not in the same step by step by step formation as it is here, but I wouldn't rule it out completely. So the question is, how do you trade this? Okay, if the market opens uh, Monday, Tuesday, and it starts bouncing, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna buy calls? Are you gonna jump out of your puts? Are you, what is your plan of action? So to nail this move, okay, this is how precise you have to be. Uh, you cannot make the wrong decision. You know, let's say you build a position of a few hundred contracts and you're carrying this position, whether you're using S&P 500 futures or SPY, doesn't really make a whole lot of difference in this particular instance because on the move expansion, you're gonna make money either way. But you have to be exceptionally, exceptionally well aware that any sort of bounce, even the mild bounce, get like if you're carrying the big position, it will you'll be sweating bullets. You emotionally, I'm telling you, just after this week and this week, the bounces they weren't even huge. 
like 90% of the traders, they jump out of really good trades. So if you, if you know that about yourself, oh my God, Leo, my account is going negative, I'm gonna jump out of this trade, guys. You do that next week, I mean, you're gonna cost yourself a lot of money. So to avoid doing that, I invite you to trade with the 13 Market Moves coach, guys. Uh, visit 13mmtv.com or 13marketmoves.com. Sign up with someone who will tell you, don't jump the fuck out out of this trade. Stay strong. The big payout is coming. Let's roll. I'll see you guys in the next video soon.